I began my college career certain of one thing. Music school was going to be exactly like the movie Fame. <laughs> and ever since I was 15 years old, I dreamt of being a composer. You know the one, old guy, sits in a chair with a fountain pen and manuscript paper and writes music all day long, usually wearing a big curly white wig. Can't you see the resemblance? <laughs> I wanted nothing more than to be just like that. However, when I got to music school, I realized I was actually certain of absolutely nothing, mainly because I never got to do any elaborate dance scenes with my classmates. <laughs> it was a real shame. I would go from sitting in one chair to the next, from the piano basement to my desk, from reading music to playing music to writing music. And just like that, most of my days were spent behind closed doors in tight spaces, focusing on very specific skills. I became trapped. Little by little, this started to drive me mad. And my madness was supplemented by the less than supportive environment that closed spaces often foster. I noticed that my skin was raw from microaggressions and my mind was hungry to reconnect with all of the life going on outside of that dreadful piano basement. By the end of my first semester, I had to pause. So, I decided to leave music school in search of topics I couldn't even imagine. And Brown was the only place where I saw myself doing that. When I transferred to Brown, I was comforted in knowing that the university has phenomenal professors in each and every department who could offer intellectual and interpersonal growth. As mid-year graduates, we've been uniquely positioned to take advantage of the flexibility at this university. And we've arrived at this stage at our own pace, walking to our own tempo. For many of us, that included a pause. As I began my time at Brown, in the spring of 2016, I could not have been more excited and ready for the opportunities to grow. In the previous year alone, I had spent the equivalent of 35 days in the piano basement, which is the same amount of time it takes to walk from Perkins to Paige Robinson 4,200 times. <laughs> Transfers, you know how far that is. <laughs> Except I wasn't moving at all. I was in a basement. So believe me when I say that I was ready to get up and move. I stayed true to my 15-year-old self by taking independent studies in composition, but I fed my hungry mind by taking courses on decolonizing African education. I also found out that Brown has a piano basement itself. So if I missed my old life at any point, I knew exactly where I could go. As spring turned to summer, I went home to Chile expecting to return to my friends and professors in three short months. But one day in June, my father was admitted to the hospital, and the next day he was in a coma. Soon, my family and I were hit with words such as end-stage liver disease and cancer. And in that moment, I paused for a second time. I paused because I didn't know if my father would wake up. I didn't know what tomorrow would look like, let alone next week, month, or year. During this pause, I checked in with myself and asked, what do I need? And honestly, I couldn't find the answer because I knew I needed my father, but that just wasn't in my control. It was in this pause that I chose to stay with my family in Chile because just as I needed them, they needed me. I wish I could say that this choice was made out of bravery or the desire to grow, heal, and reach my full potential, but it was made out of fear. Fear of losing a parent, fear of being absent, fear of not knowing how to deal with the pain. And the year that followed it did indeed take forever. For many of us, our time away from Brown was difficult. For others, it was joyful. And for some of us, it may even have been simply dull. But we each took the time and had the courage to honor what was drawing us outside of this institution. I came back to Brown in the fall of 2017 
with my mind on high alert and with two family members recovering from a major and life-changing surgery. Although physically I remained unscathed, my mind and heart felt their pain profoundly. And that's how my real time at Brown began. It began with counseling and psychological services. This is Colleen, how may I help you? <laughs> it began with missing new friends who had already graduated. It began with my desperately trying to connect with people and never feeling fully seen. It began with an unexpected and surprising sculpture of a giant blue bear being crushed by a lamp on the lower green that everyone seemed to have already dealt with. <laughs> This is where I understood what it means to be a mid-year graduate, or as we call it, point fiver. Being a point fiver means taking the time. For some of us, it means taking the time to step out of one classroom and explore the vast options at a place like Brown. For others, it means exploring everything that can be learned and experienced outside of educational institutions altogether. For some of us, it means graduating early, which I frankly didn't even know was possible. <laughs> Sometimes it means staying at home, working hard to support our families. Sometimes it means taking the time needed just to get back on our feet. Sometimes it's taking the time to feel pain that can only be imagined until it is there, aching in front of us, begging for our attention. I took time at first to take care of myself and discover what I wanted out of my education, and then to take care of my father, support my mother, and love my sister. And as I got back to Brown, I found that I still needed time. I needed time to heal, time to enjoy the fresh air, time to play with children. I think I will always need time for these things. And just like that relative who always has something to say, Brown has some strong ideas on what we should be doing with our time. But Auntie Brown also helps us carve out space for ourselves, for our voices, for our needs, for our pain, and space to love. For me, that space looks like supplementing a music degree with education and ethnic studies courses to nurture my mind while tutoring and getting to know the most wonderful Syrian family where I get to read stories, play, and eat baklava, of course, which nurtures my soul and my sweet tooth. All of us have found our homes in diverse groups and spaces at Brown that nurture the wonderful complexity that exists within. When we are forced to pause and think about where we need to be, what we need to give ourselves and the people we love, we are taking time that is usually spent doing things and using it to decide what is truly worth doing. When we pause to take time, we don't need to know what the future holds or if the pause will even be worthwhile. We need, to be, we need to figure out what is missing in our lives, what we owe ourselves and our communities. We ask ourselves, what do I need? Where do I need to put my heart, soul, and energy right now? I've been asking myself, how can I support my people in Chile who are fighting for their basic human rights? Their calls for justice and equality have been met with brutal state-sanctioned violence. Over 230 people have lost their vision due to bullet wounds, but we still see the truth and we know the justice that we are owed. In this time, I ask myself, how can I help from abroad? In a world with a multitude of issues yelling for our time, how do we choose which ones we can devote our energy to? Tackling these questions is why our time and experiences are vastly different. Our decisions are unique to us. The time we have taken to make these choices has allowed us to forge our own paths, to take control of our multidimensionality and to honor our ancestors, the people who came before us, who made it possible for us to have this time. The future is still very uncertain, but our strength lies in the ability to make time even when it is not presented to us, because we recognize the importance of grappling with difficult questions so that we can better represent our future. I speak for the class of 2019.5, 
knowing that somehow beyond our plans and beyond our expectations, we see pathways emerging that will take us places where we can continue to grow and give and be thankful. So we thank Brown, we thank our friends and professors for their invaluable love and support. We thank our families, and I wanna thank the Actarini family because you have brought so much love and joy to my life. And I'm so grateful that my father can be here today to see me graduate. <laughs> Out of the stops and starts, the pains and the joys, we feel hopeful and prepared for whatever may come. And if we have any doubts, we know that we can always take the time to pause. Congratulations, class of 2019.5. I am so honored to finally be graduating. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and to be graduating with such a remarkable and inspiring group of people. Thank you.